hello everyone so today we are going to talk about dynamic programming with C++ implementation so right this is the textbook definition dynamic programming DP is an algorithmic technique for solving an optimization problem by breaking it down into simpler sub problems and utilizing the fact that optimal solution to be the overall problem depends upon the optimal solution to its sub problems so this is the definition and let's try to understand this in a with an example consider a fibonacci sequence i'm sure you may have heard this heard that if not fibonacci sequence means uh, the next number is the addition of previous numbers and the first and second numbers are 1 and 1 then 2 is coming from adding 1 and 1 together and 3 coming from adding 2 and 1 together and 5 comes from adding 3 and 2 together so this is the Fibonacci series and if we represent it with a function fib n equals to fib n minus 1 plus fib n minus 2 and if I represent it with a tree, f5 is the addition of its two children, which is f4 plus f3. And f3 means f4 means f3 plus f2. And f3 means again f2 plus f1. So like that. Okay, so we can uh, solve this in multiple ways. So as you can see here, we can clearly see a recursive function, a recursion and also you can see the same problem the same calculation done in multiple places f3 is calculated here and here and f2 is calculated here and here here and f1 is here 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 and here so you can see the repeat my the same calculations are repeated in multiple places and if we have a some way to store the result of that calculation we can just use it when we, when it is required again that is called memoization a technique in programming that saves the result of a calculation to be used later which can increase the performance of an algorithm drastically so right let's go ahead and implement this in c plus plus Let's create a new console application. I'll call it Fibonacci. Right, let's create the project. Okay. Mm, so, where do we get started? Okay, uh, let's add a class. Fibonacci and here I'll add a public method fib so this should return the Fibonacci value integer fib int n so whatever the given integer value n we should return the fibonacci value right so basically the fibonacci value would be return fib n minus 1 plus n fib and minus 2 but as I said before Fibonacci uh, series first value and second value is 1 so uh, here if n equals 1 if we consider the 
items of the series starts from zero if n equals one or n equals zero then we should return one mm, right right now let's test this here let's start uh, uh, let's print the first 10 numbers of Fibonacci series so, std see out fib oh we need to have a class f dot fib i Now let's run the project. So here is the result 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, 34, 55. So this is the first 10 numbers of Fibonacci series. And now let's see how many, uh, how many times we call this fib function. So for that we can, we can add a private variable int calls equals zero so i'll use this to get the number of calls or oh, maybe yeah why make it private it's not critical let's make this public here i'll increment every time i call this fib I'll increment calls right and here before I call this I'll say uh, no by default it will be zero so we don't need to worry about that so here I'll print the number of calls we had calls F dot calls. Okay. Now if I do that, now here you can see calls two seventy six. Mm. Let's add a new line here, so we can see it clearly. Calls two seventy six. So we have called fib function. 276 times remember that now this is the recursive solution now what I'm going to do is I'm going to implement a memoization dynamic program approach and see how many calls that we can reduce so from that what I mean is as I explained here you can see f3 f is called twice f2 is called one two three times so these repeated calculations i'm gonna i'm gonna save the results of the calculations once the calculation is done and reuse it S by doing that i'm gonna uh, reduce the number of calls i would have okay so to do that here 
I'll add another variable a vector in the type of integer and I'll call it mem it stands for memoization table or something so as the initial values I'll add 1 and 1 because zeroth element and the first element in the Fibonacci series is 1 so in order to use vectors I have to include vectors right oh and std okay std vector right now here if instead of returning fib n minus 1 plus fib n minus 2 what I should do is let me cut this mem n minus sorry not n minus 1 mem n that means uh, nth element of this mem uh, vector but in order to do that we have to make sure that we have an nth element in our mem table so for that instead of this return i'm gonna do mem here if uh, in to make sure that we have the nth element we have to check if n is larger than or equal to mem dot size so if this condition becomes true that means we have an nth element in our mem table right if uh, sorry if this condition becomes true that means we don't have an nth element in our mem table that's what it means so if not what we have to do is push back fib n minus 1 plus fib n minus 2 so that means we are calculating the previous value and the next previous value uh, of the Fibonacci series and putting it back into the mem uh, vector after doing that we will have the nth element so we can just return it right okay hope that is clear now if I run the same code you can see uh, the same series is here and earlier as I remember there were 276 calls now there are only 26 calls which is a massive improvement compared to the previous case so in terms of time complexity we have improved our code from big O uh, 2 to the power n to big O n and thanks for watching so if you like to support my work you can get the membership of the patron club and i also put the project for you to download there as well see you in another episode goodbye